Welcome to this satisfactory tutorial where I will explain how to optimize your factory to get the best efficiency and throughput for your ores and parts, all the way from the mines onto the belts, into the smelters and then into the constructors. Before I start, be aware that I have not unlocked any tier 5 or tier 6 technology in this factory, but I will reference the information found in the research menu for the relevant items in those tiers. Let's start with the mines which is the foundation of your factory. When you find a mining node, like this one shown here, you will uh, see the purity of the node indicated when hovering over it. Keep in mind that you need to remove this before you can actually place a miner there. So the three purities are either impure, normal or pure. And this indicates how much ore you can mine from the node per minute and by using an mk1 miner on a node you will get 30 ore per minute from an impure node 60 ore per minute from a normal node and 120 ore per minute from a pure node and enough if you replace the mk1 miner with an mk2 miner it's just a matter of doubling these numbers so using an mk2 miner you will get 60 ore per minute from an impure node 120 ore per minute from a normal node and finally 240 ore per minute from a pure node. MK1 miners are unlocked with the tier 0 technology hub upgrade 4, while the MK2 miners are unlocked with the tier 4 technology steel production. Smelters, which you get from the tier 0 technology hub upgrade 1, uh, are needed to smelt um, iron and copper ore into ingots and these have a ratio of one to one in the amount of ore that they consume to the number of ingots that they output. So smelters will then smelt 30 ore into 30 ingots every minute as you will see when I go over to the smelting line I have over there later on. The tier 2 smelters are called foundries and they are unlocked in the tier 4 technology steel production and foundries are used for alloying iron ore and coal into steel ingots and foundries alloy 45 iron ore and 45 coal into 45 steel ingots every minute. Now, conveyor belts also come in different tiers. Each higher tier of conveyor belt moves more parts per minute than the previous tier. And you can see the number of parts it can move in the description of the belt when hover hovering over it in the construction menu. So. The tier 0 technology, uh, hub upgrade 3, which unlocks the basic conveyor belt, can transport 60 items per minute. The uh, MK2 belt, uh, unlocked with the tier 3 technology, logistics, moves 120 items per minute. The MK3 belts, unlocked with the tier 4 technology, logistics MK3, moves 270 items per minute. And then the top tier uh, that is available in the game currently, which I haven't unlocked, is uh, the conveyor belt MK4, which is unlocked with the tier, te tier 6 technology, expanded power infrastructure, and they move 450 items per minute. Finally, we have the machines that actually manufacture the products that we use to construct various things in the world. The tier 1 machine is the constructor, uh, shown here. And this one is unlocked in the initial hub tier 0 research hub upgrade 2 and it can manufacture one part from another part. All the machines have a variable input consumption depending on what part you are producing. One example of this is that if you want to manufacture iron plates, the constructor will consume 30 iron ingots to manufacture 15 iron plates per minute, as opposed to if you want to manufacture iron rods. Then the ratio is 15 iron ingots to 15 iron rods per minute. As you can see, you can have two constructors manufacturing iron rods using one smelter, but only one constructor manufacturing iron plates using one smelter. The tier 2 machine is the assembler, and they manufacture one part from two parts. The assemblers are unlocked by the tier 2 technology part assembly, and they manufacture parts like rotors, stators, motors, and so forth. The tier 3 machine, which I haven't unlocked, is the manufacturer, and they create one part from either three or four parts. The manufacturers are unlocked by the tier 5 technology industrial manufacturing, and they manufacture parts like heavy modular frames, computers, and so forth. 
So, one of your main goals, especially in the early game, is to ensure that your factory runs efficiently and without waste. Thus, it is important to look at how many parts a machine requires per minute to produce X amount of parts from its output. A very handy tool for that, that which I was tipped off on in our Discord, is the Satisfactory Calculator, which I will link in the description of this tutorial. The calculator lets you specify the number of parts per minute you want to manufacture, or you can specify how many machines you want manufacturing the part, and it will give you an exact number of what you need in the chain, even with a nice flowchart option to show you the chain you need to build. So if you want to keep your main factory clean, I would also recommend that you use outposts for smelting, especially when you reach the higher tiers of the research tree, because some of the parts in the higher tiers require substantial amounts of metal ingots. Also keep in mind that smelters and foundries give off a smoke plume, which you can see there, and that smoke plume actually goes through the floor, uh, so it's visible upstairs and can be slightly annoying in a multi-level factory. Now, let's go have a look at one of the manufacturing chains in this specific factory. As you can see, I have five assemblers. These are the tier two machines, um, and they are all producing motors. On the left side here, you can see that they require 10 rotors and 10 stators per minute to output five motors per minute. Um, let's follow this chain backwards. So on the left here, you can see that I have um, copper smelters that are smelting copper ingots. So they are smelting copper ore into copper ingots. And the first smelter produces 30 ingots. The next one also produces 30 ingots. So these are tier 1 belts that goes into this merger here. And that means we have 60 iron ingots coming out, which is exactly what this tier 1 belt is capable of transporting. But then, after this merger, we have to use a tier 2 belt, as you can see, conveyor belt MK2, because now we are transporting more than 60 parts per minute. So from that point on, a tier 2 belt is needed. With the fourth smelter, we are now up to 120 ingots per minute, which is exactly what this belt is capable of sustaining. So let's just follow the belt up to the second level. And uh, there you can see that I have um, built con uh, stacked conveyor poles, where I have the uh, coal going over there to the uh, steel smelting foundries um, but also the copper ingots are being transported over to the uh, um, assemblers yes assemblers that are over there so if you want more tips about the uh, stacked conveyor poles and how you can use them efficiently uh, take a look at my main bus small and stacked conveyor pole tutorial which is in the same playlist as this one and you will find a link to it the playlist in the description of the video. So you can see that I'm belting in the copper and the steel ingots using a drive under bridge here so that I can drive under here with one of my vehicles if I should so desire. And one side takes the copper ingots down into the left side of this uh, assembly line while the other belt takes steel ingots into this side of the uh, assembly line. So, on this side, we are manufacturing wire from copper ingots. You can see 15 copper ingots will be turned into 45 wire per minute. On the other side, we are producing steel pipes, which is a ratio 1 to 1, 15 to 15 per minute. So, this is the requirement for producing stators. So to get these parts to the assemblers over here that are set up to make stators, while retaining a driveway for the vehicles again, I am belting the parts over to the edge and then over to the beginning of the line of assemblers. Now, if we go over to the assemblers and have a look at one of the assemblers producing the uh, stators, we can see that it takes 18 steel pipe per minute, so three per part and 60 wire per minute, which is 10 per part, to produce six stators per minute. 
which means that since we have five of these, we can do a quick calculation that tells us that we will need 90 steel pipes and 300 wire to create 30 stators per minute. From this calculation, we can actually see that there is an underproduction of both steel pipes and wire, and the manufacturing chain currently produces 75 steel pipes, not 90, and 225 wire, not 300 per minute. In other words, I do have to do some work here so that I can make this manufacturing chain more efficient. But that's also part of the point of this tutorial, to make you aware of the need for doing these calculations if you want to have or retain 100% efficiency on your machines. Here you can see that I am using mergers, just like I was doing down on the copper belts, to merge the output of the machines onto one belt, and then I transport the stators down one level to the final part of the manufacturing chain. So let's just go down here. There we go. The area you can see over here, that's the area of the factory that is producing rotors. Um, the constructors that you can see over there are producing iron rods and screws, which are the parts that are used uh, to produce rotors. But the same problem has occurred down here. I am underproducing rotors, uh, just as I am underproducing stators upstairs, because I have five of these assemblers creating motors. And if we go back to these again, we can see that they each require 10 per minute, and we're only producing 30 of each. So I definitely have to do some work to um, ensure that this manufacturing chain actually works as intended. Now, when you're working with any machine that has two or more inputs, you should pay attention to the inputs on the backside. Um, which the more advanced the machine is, the more advanced your feeding mechanism to the machine will have to be, as these inputs are close to one another, as you can see here. Creative usage of stacked belts and splitters will be needed to ensure proper feeding of the machines, and I am still in the process of refining optimal setups in terms of both efficiency and space usage, while also trying to obtain an aesthetically pleasing view of the more advanced machines. I will revisit this topic in a later tutorial, and the splitter setups that you see here um, are very inefficient, because the first splitter will split half-half, which means that the further down you come on the belt, uh, the less parts you get, as long as this machine is, is working. So the last machine in this belt is not just uh, underfed because of a lack of um, rotors and stators, but it's also underfed. Even if I had the, the full output, it would be underfed, because as long as this machine and this machine and the next machine and so forth is working, uh, the last one would get very few of the parts and would not work at 100% efficiency. Um, another topic that I also want to go into in a different tutorial is over and under clocking. As you can see here, there is a clock speed indicator here. Um, it's kind of complicated. You need power slugs to create these uh, power shards, but I will just briefly mention that clocking machines can be useful, especially at the beginning of the game. Uh, if you have the slugs um, and the, you need the first slug you get of each color, there are three colors of them, um, you can use them to overclock your power plants, uh, which means that you don't have to build as many of them. And you can also underclock any other machine to reduce either the output of parts per minute or you can adjust the power usage per craft cycle. So this can be very useful before you get coal power up and running. Um, but for all the machines that I've shown in this tutorial, everything is running at 100%. So I haven't done any under or overclocking here. And with that, I just want to remind you that Satisfactory, like most production line games, is a game where you should never be afraid to tear down something that you've built and rebuild it. Creating a factory that you feel is perfect to your specific style of building is not something that you should expect to happen in just one single game session. 
When you make a mistake, learn from it, learn from others, watch tutorials and let's plays, and with each new playthrough you'll see that your building style and your factory efficiency will improve every time you build a new factory. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you all next time.